Hi, it's Werner from Koitech. If you've been developing an IoT application that requires positioning, you might have come across the Zoe M8 series uh, GNSS system in packages from Ublox. The M8G has been on the market for a while, and according to the datasheet, it has a continuous tracking current consumption of 40 milliamps and 12.5 milliamps in low power 1 hertz tracking. This current consumption is measured at 1.8 volts with both GPS and GLONASS enabled. There is now a new member of the family called Zoe M8B. This one adds a new mode called Super E for super efficient. This one should bring the current consumption down in 1 Hz Super E tracking to 8.3 milliamps. This is in the same configuration with GPS and GLONASS enabled. So what we have here is the evaluation board for the Zoe M8B where we can measure the power consumption using our OTI arc by connecting it to the core shunt on the board here. And then we can use the Ublox U-Center software to monitor the receiver status. So let's start by looking into the power consumption in an office environment. What we want to try is the Super E mode and we'll use an active antenna close to the window to make sure we get the best possible signal. And this active antenna power consumption will not be taken into account in this case. Uh, the building we're in is uh, fairly RF tight, which does cause us some problems with the receiver signal quality. And as we can see, average power consumption is 15 milliamps, which means that we're not able to get all the way down to the 8.3 milliamps according to the datasheet. But we do enter power optimized tracking, uh, which is the Super E mode. A more realistic scenario is having a passive antenna directly connected to the Zoe M8B outdoors. Let's start the measurement and see how this performs. As we can see, we have entered the super efficient power optimized tracking mode. And we have an average power consumption of 8.5 milliamps. Give it some time to stabilize. The duty cycle is... Uh, very close to the optimal numbers here, 8.5 milliamps. We're almost down to the 8.3 as indicative power requirements in the datasheet. So if we take a look at these two measurements where the green trace is the indoors measurement and the red one is the outdoors one, we can see that the receiver entered Super E mode in both cases, but with different duty cycles, which will have a direct impact on power consumption. The indoor setup resulted in lower signal to noise ratio with fewer tracked satellites compared to outdoors. This then results in a higher duty cycle indoors with around 50 milliamps current consumption in comparison to the outdoors case where we had a lower duty cycle resulting in an average current of around 8.5 milliamps. To see all the measurements, download the full OTI project from the link listed below. Thanks for watching, subscribe to our channel for more discussion on energy optimization topics, visit our forum at koitech.com.